Okay, so I showed you last time, um, or actually I showed you with the last unit, how myosin pulls actin inward. So this is myosin, and this is actin. And we saw how when there, there's ATP, um, it can actually move it. So here you see this thing moving. So what's happening is the myosin is here. And so you're just seeing a little section of myosin. So that's myosin. And then it has these little things that are sticking up. They look like... I really hate when that happens. They look like that. And then the actin is like this. And like this. And so the actin is this blue thing. And what happens is that these things attach to this and yank them inward. And these things attach to this and yank them inward. So instead of having something like this, let's see if I can draw it the same underneath. The myosin stays the same length. The actin stays the same length, but it gets yanked in. So this thing gets pulled in like this, and this thing gets pulled in. Imagine it 3D, like this. So this whole section gets shorter like this. So if you picture these, you've got those along the entire length of a myofibril. You've, and that's a myofibril, and you've got a ton of these in there. Here's the myosin with a bunch of these in a row on top of each other. There's the actin, here's the myosin. There's the actin, here's the myosin. Notice the striped appearance. And then you've got that in another myofibril, and another, and another, and another. And this whole thing makes the muscle cell. And so picture this getting shorter, making the whole muscle cell get shorter. When the muscle gets shorter, it's going from, here's the muscle, attached to a bone here, and attached to a bone right here. Here's the bone. When this whole thing gets shorter, it pulls the bone up like this. So it makes the bone move from here to here. So a little, if, if every single little unit like this contracts in a muscle cell, and then a bunch of muscle cells contract, it will make the whole muscle contract, which means all the muscles get shorter. And so I have a video next that you won't be able to see with my screen capture, but I will put it on its learning for you. Okay, so let's put this over here. So the actin is pulled toward the myosin, which is this, but I think I'm putting toward the middle. toward the center of the sarcomere. So what I want you to know from here is that this one is all stretched out and relaxed, and this one has contracted. So that's what I want you to be able to do um, for this. On a quiz, I would be able to, I'd put these two and I'll ask you which one's contracted or which one's relaxed. And so here's a muscle. So picture those little myofibrils, the actin and the myosin, in each muscle cell and a whole bunch of muscle cells in here to make the muscle. And so when all of the myosin in a muscle cell pulls all the actin, the entire muscle cell gets shorter. And that's going to make, if you have a bunch of them, what, honey? Are there any questions? I'll ask you something. The entire muscle will get shorter. And so when that happens, um, the, mus the, the bone is pulled up. So here's one more question. Um, you need to know this thing. I think it's in your notes, but not in the video. This thing is a tendon. And so you should memorize that a tendon connects a muscle, you do? Mm -hmm. Muscle and to bone. bone. It's thing, the thing attached between a muscle and a bone. You got it. So when the muscle contracts, do you want the tendon to be stretchy or do you want it to be strong? Strong. How do you know that? Because if it's stretchy, it won't do much. But if it's strong, it might be able to pick up something that's really heavy. Okay, that, that little girl has it. So here's the muscle when it's long. It's like this, and here's the tendon, and the bone is down here. If the muscle contracted and the tendon stretched out, the bone wouldn't move. So the tendon is strong, not super stretchy, and it just comes, the, so it pulls the bone up. So, very good, Anna. Which type of muscle tissue is striated? Everything that's not smooth. So that's skeletal and cardiac. Which type of muscle tissue is found in the heart? Anna, what do you think? Smooth, skeletal, or cardiac? Cardiac. Very good. I was just making a book. Just, just taking a guess? You did a good guess. Which type of muscle cell has many nuclei per cell? Those are the really, really long ones, which are skeletal. Which type of muscle tissue is voluntary? Anna, can you decide that you want to make your heart stop? No. Good. So it's definitely not the heart. Can you decide that you want to make your blood vessels open or close? No. So it's not smooth. Can you decide to talk or walk? Yes. All right. So it's skeletal. 
which type of muscle tissue can shorten or contract? And this is a trick question. What kind of muscle can shorten? Say all of them. All of them. All right. What? You going to do this with me too? Mm hmm Which type of muscle tissue dilates the pupils of your eyes? Do you have to think about making your eyes? In fact, Daddy came home tonight from the eye doctors with his eyes pu his pupils dilated, right? Mm -hmm. What do they look like? They look bigger. Yeah, the black part of his eyes looked well, bigger. They don't look that kind, but they look a little bit. Like a little bit like that, and that is not something that he controls. So that's smooth, because it's also not in the heart. Which type of muscle tissue is striated or striped? Well, you can do it. It's okay. You can do it, but you can't make it do it. You can actually make your eyes dilate a little bit by focusing on different things, but it's definitely not a voluntary thing. Okay, so which type of muscle tissue is striated? Why does it say A, B, C? Well, I want my kids to guess, my students to guess, A, B, or C. So in this case, striated means striped. I thought when it, I saw A, B, C, I thought it was like A, B, C, but you forgot order. Like oh, ABC I forgot to put an A, B, C order. No, it's not like that. Just guesses. Okay, which type of muscle tissue is this? Okay, two things. It's striped, and there are no branches. It's just uh, long. A couple of minutes ago, I talked about the dot. You did. You did. So, it's... Hush for a minute. So, it's skeletal. This type has no stripes. So, this type is... Do you remember if there's no stripes? Do you remember what it's called? I think you had it. Smooth skeletal or party. Smooth. You got it. Super duper. This tissue has, this one has stripes and it's branched, so they can talk to each and other. It has little tiny, like, nuclei. Like, yeah. Yeah. So do you know smooth skeletal or cardiac? Uh, cardiac? Yes. Oh, my little girl. Which type of muscle tissue has just one Which nucleus? Just taking guesses. <laughs> You're guessing well. So there's two answers here. Smooth and cardiac. Skeletal has a bunch. Which type of muscle t tissue is branched and interconnected? And so you want the cells of the heart to be able to talk to each other and excite each other. So that one's cardiac. Which type of muscle tissue has the highest resistance to fatigue? Okay, what happens if your leg muscles get tired? You, you don't die. Walk. You die. Yeah, you rest, right? If your leg no. muscles get tired, uh, yeah, well, you I don't mean, die, I right? Mean, no. I thought you were talking about the heart. I, what happens if your heart gets tired? You die. Yeah. So the cardiac muscle tissue, you want to have a very high resistance to fatigue. Here's a picture of the junction. Junction means a connection, like the junction between 95 and 195, for example, or 95 and 495. That's where they connect up. So a junction is when things connect. So this is between a neuron, which is this part. Let's get this out of the way. Okay, so here's the end of a neuron, which is a nerve cell, and it's talking to this muscle cell, and that muscle cell, and that one, and that one. And it's so the black thing is talking to the tendon? Yeah, the, bla the black... Like the bone? No, this is muscle, and this is nerve. So this is like the brain tissue, except it's not. It's a neuron. Well, it kind of looks like, like muscle. Like muscle. Like muscle. They're yeah. very, 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 um, let's see. They're very um, magnified, so you can see them very big. You can't even really see, you can see the stripes a little bit. Mainly you're looking at myofibrils here. But anyway, yeah, it's hard to see the stripes in this picture. But these are neurons. When a neuron tells a muscle cell what to do, it secretes a chemical. It's like a hormone, but it's really close acting. So it's right between here and here. Because these aren't physically touching. There's a teeny little gap between them. Here's the end of the neuron, and here's the beginning of the muscle cell. So pretend I drew this better. So that's a little gap. So there's little chemicals that are secreted from this side to that side. Oh, that looks like a hat with a dog, <laughs> with a half a dog's head on it. It does. Okay, these are called neurotransmitter. And Neuro little, like like little balls yeah. on his hat. Neuro for neuron, transmitter meaning to go from one thing to another. So it transmits information. And then the last fun fact about muscle cells, I think they had this a little bit backwards. About 40% of your energy that you burn um, is useful and goes into making ATP or making you work. The other 60% is released as heat. I think I have this a little bit messed up, but the idea that I want you to get is that you have um, most of your energy, some of your energy goes into work, but a lot of your energy is just released as heat. So if you're running around moving your body, a lot of it's going to go into heat. And I think that's the end of my story. Yep. All right, say goodbye, Anna. Goodbye. Say goodbye, William. Goodbye.